And so because of that, it seems that preachers want to stress her as opposed to this woman. See, this woman didn't get saved in the middle of the of world forum. When, when, in, in the middle of a marketplace, in the, the middle of town square, in the middle of the Newfield Terrace, this woman got saved in church. And because she was saved in church, a lot of preachers stay away from her because they don't want everybody to come to church because they might think they can be saved too. But I'm here to tell you that the God that I serve, He can save anybody. Yeah. 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 Saying, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm just a nobody. I'm trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. That's my testimony, and I'm going to do it to the day He takes me from you. Some of you this morning feel the same way because, see, this woman had issues. And her issue was not just a migraine headache. Her issue wasn't just a hangnail. Her issue wasn't just a pimple in the middle of her forehead. Yes, yes. She had deep, physically debilitating problems. The Bible says that she was afflicted by the Spirit. The spirit of infirmity was upon her. But the fact of the matter was that even in spite of how she felt, yes. guess where she was? She was in church. Really. Somebody ought to say, I get an upset stomach. Can't make it. Ain't my Sunday to sing. Can't make it. It's hot outside. Can't make it. Cold outside. Can't make it. Raining outside. Can't make it. Sunny outside. Can't make it. This woman made it. Even with an issue. And she didn't just have any issue. The Bible says that she was bent over. Probably a, a disease of the spinal cord. A, a disease that caused her extreme anguish because every now and then she was even forced lower to the ground. The theologian said she couldn't look up if she wanted to. Some of y'all are just that same way right now. Like that you're so beat down you can't look up. And because of that, Satan has you right where he wants you. If he can keep you stooped over and not able to see further than your shoe tips, you ain't ever going to get away from him. Bend over. Some of you this morning still think that way. But Jesus never enters into your survival equation. Oh, you look at Motrin, Ambien. You, you look at phenobarbital and caffeine. You look at uh, Mary J. Warner. <laughs> <laughs> Everything to get yourself together except Jesus. He is the great physician. But when we get sick and tired of being sick and tired, then we call on Jesus. But let me tell you that no matter what your condition is, whether it's physical or mental, Jesus is able to fix it. And if he can't fix it, it don't need fixing. He is able to do what he said he would do. But this woman made it to church in spite of what she was going through. She made it her business to be in that place. And today I commend each and every one of you uh, for being in this place. I'm sure every one of you had some other place to go. Yes, sir. At least I like to think that. But because you were convicted one way or the other to be here, I'm praying that you don't leave here the same way you came here. Yes. Time after time, I remember going into a church and worried that the women won't see my sin. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, y'all. <laughs> you don't put them sharp suits on to be unknown. Come on. Be real about this thing. Tell the truth. Take it down. We want to be seen. That's why we get sharped up. But I want to tell you that here is the place where the Savior is. But Jesus Christ is the main attraction. It's here that you can meet Jesus and he can change your life. And see, that's why you 
don't need to leave here the same way you came. If you come here looking for a change, you can find a change. And the change, his name is Jesus. But this woman realized that she had an issue, but, 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 but some things had to have happened even before she got to church. I thought about this because I'm saying to myself, if you had an issue like this woman's issue, if you are so deformed that, that oh, can't help but know you got a problem, would you go in there with them for? Man, I got folk that won't even come here if the shoes don't match the dress. <laughs> but here was a woman so stooped over that she couldn't raise up if she wanted, but she still was in church. She was still looking for her healing. Her, her posture was a dead giveaway. Try as she might, she couldn't straighten up if she wanted to. I got to believe it was some kind of disease, like, like, like a spondylitis or something like you learned in your AMP class. Where, where, the, where the vertebrae were being fused together, where the, where the cartilage that was supposed to be between was gone. And every time she moved, the excruciating pain. Angel, uh, Reverend Angel Kyle just had a, 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 a nerve releasing surgery. Got his scar on his back about eight, ten inches long. He is in pain, but he's not in pain like he was. This woman was hurting, but the first thing she did was she recognized she had a problem. Even when she got to church, she didn't wait for the preacher to point out a problem. She came self diagnosed. She had an issue. Some of you got issues too. And you're hoping the preacher don't see them. Well, just remember this. The preacher don't have no heaven or hell. Your prayer should be that Jesus sees them and, and Jesus accounts for them. And Jesus changes your life in spite of them. Well, I'm so glad that the first step on recovery was the fact that she recognized she had a problem. 18 years. <laughs> she ain't got two thirds of my burden. Eighteen years I've been struggling. Coming to church ain't nothing happening. Going to the market ain't nothing happening. Going to a job ain't nothing happening. Everywhere I go, folk look at me. Yeah, Sally stupid over a little more this week than she was last week. Every time they look at me, they pity me, but I'm still pressing on them. Yeah. Yeah. Something was going on in her life, something that was not normal. She was attacked with a spirit right. of infirmity. Right. You see, sometimes that spirit of infirmity attacks us in places where the outward man can't see. Right. Right. That's when you start to sing. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Right. Nobody knows but Jesus. See, this woman, she didn't have an option. Everybody saw her problem. And you need to understand that even if nobody else but Jesus can see your problem, your problem is still important. But you got to recognize you got an issue. So many of us miss that self-diagnosis. We're walking around here broken and bruised, battered and born and torn up inside, and we still talk about, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> You don't know nothing about folks. Behind the mask, I got my Christianity on. Jesus is all to me. Answer the phone. Hey, he's worthy. What's wrong with hello? Oh, he's more than worthy. Hello worked a long time. But still, you're bound up. You're still looking at the ground and you still can't look up. But you're still trying to fake the funk and say, Okay. No, you're not. Jesus knows spirituality, but her spirit recognized that something was amiss, but, but that's not enough just to recognize it. You need to realize that you need some help. So many of us walk in the walk that we're trying to walk by ourselves. We running into walls and getting up battered and bruised and still trying to circumvent that wall all by ourselves. Little did we know that Jesus said, I am the door. Yes. Yes. We're trying to run through an obstacle that Jesus will open up and let you walk through. Yes. But you don't realize you need him. Yes. But this woman not only had to recognize she had a problem, she had to realize that she knew the problem was out. Yes. 
and you know it too. But sometimes we just get so pumped up on ourselves. I got this one, Jesus. You get the next one. See, 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 I've been, I've been working on this thing for a long time, Jesus. I got him just about where I want him now. No, you don't. Because even if you get him this time, he's going to get away. Tell you like he did. But if you let Jesus bring him to you, that's the one you need. Not the scallywag where you got the hole with your chain on it. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 that chain, I know how to break chain, I can, man, chain ain't never stopped me. But Jesus did. You want to entertain a change, you first need to recognize that you have a need for a change. You need to realize who the change maker is. His name is Jesus. We all have issues, but this woman is showing us that she recognized the issue, but she realized that Jesus was the only way. She couldn't stay home. See, in those days, Jesus was incarnate. The Bible said, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, some folks don't realize that Jesus wasn't omnipresent when he was in the human form. So because of that, she had to go to where Jesus was. See, but with, the, and with the issue of blood, she pressed her way. Because yes, she knew if I could but touch the hem of his garment. Yes, but here, this woman couldn't have got through the crowd if they put her on a wheelbarrow. Her infirmities was just that bad, but she knew that Jesus was hanging out. And so she went to the place where he was hanging out. The Bible says he was teaching in the synagogue. So guess what she did? She enrolled for the class. She got right on the roads. And when she got there, all the other students was all around and they was listening trying to see what they could do to trip him up. You see, surely this scally back from Nazareth can't be the son of God. Why? Because what good thing could come from Nazareth? What good thing can come from Newfield Terrace? What good thing can come from Panfilly Avenue? Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm in, I'm in Southeast Avenue. What good thing Jesus is the good thing. Yes, and he was in the church. She knew and she realized that she wanted the problem solver. She had to go to where the problem solver was. She couldn't call up Miss Cleo. Well, Miss Cleo, she don't work in this case. She couldn't look at her Ouija board. It had dust on it. It wasn't going to give her answer. The eight ball never answered. But she knew where Jesus was, and this is what Jesus specializes in. He specializes in stuff you can't do for yourself. He specializes in stuff that we can't do. The lady came looking for Jesus. What about you? Do you go to church looking for Jesus? Do you go to church looking for Jesus? Or do you go there because there's somewhere else to go? We need to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Know that he had got it, not you yourself. We are his people and we have made us a man of self. We come to church to see Jesus. Oh, I know he's everywhere, but he said we're two or three. Gathered together in my name. There will I be in the midst. This woman knew Jesus was at church. And so she went there. Looking for a change. We come into this house, we should realize that he's able to help us. That he's able to keep us. That he's able to tell our troubles to. Do I have any witnesses today that know Jesus? Yes, that's all about the church. We can know Jesus. So she got there after recognizing she had a problem. And after realizing she needed a problem solver, she came to church with an agenda. Oh, I like that. I like that real good because, see, we often have an agenda, but Jesus is not on it. Is Jesus on your agenda? Cast all our cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. Is there anybody here to know that Jesus cares for you? Come on. Is there anybody here to know that he is able to kill you? She recognized she had an issue and she realized that Jesus was the only way. 
So she pressed her way to church, and here she was. It's, it's good to know that we can now start the process even before we get to church. Right. See, when Jesus died, he took off that humanity. Right. And he put back on his deity. Yeah. And so his omnipresence is now where he is because he sent back the comforter. Yeah, right. And see, he sent back the comforter that we would have a parent. Yeah. One that would walk alongside us. Right. Everywhere I go, I carry him with me.
recognize that she had an issue and realized that Jesus was at the church and could help her. And she reminded, responded to his call. And guess what Jesus said? Woman, thou art loose.
bring them right there and lay them right there so that we don't have to take them out. That we might not go home the same yeah. way. I don't care if you're in the choir. I want you to come up and lay them at the altar. Let somebody know that Jesus is enough. Don't everybody move at once. Because if you try to tell me ain't no issues out here, the devil is a liar. You worried about what the fuck on your road thing. The fuck on your road ain't got nothing to do with you. You stay bound up if you want. They'll still be laughing at you. They'll be laughing at you bound up. This morning, this morning, issues. Issues are all around us, God. Issues are all, all around us, God. From the cold pit to the door, from the ceiling to the floor. We got some issues, God. But now we are recognizing the fact that we got some stuff in us that is not pleasing to you. And because it's not pleasing to you, God, we don't want it to uh, get in the way of our relationship with you. So, God, we're coming to you and asking that you might help us with the stuff that we have. Because, God, we come realizing that we can't do this by ourselves. Or if we could do it by ourselves, we wouldn't need Jesus. But because we can't, we got to have him. Because we know there's no failure in him. And right now, because we recognize that we realize, we pray right now that you allow those that are gathered around your altar, that are standing in the need of prayer, God, you ask that you allow them to respond to your call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That they don't leave this place the same way they came. No, sir. Lord, that they might be able to lay their cares upon you. Because you tell us that you care for them. And because you care for them, God, ain't nothing they can't lay at your feet. Nothing you can't deliver them from. Nothing that you can't keep them from. Nothing that you can save them for. And Lord, right now they come responding to your call. And Lord, as they get ready to go back to their seats, I'm praying that each and every one of them knows it's time that they repay you right now. And they start giving you the glory right where they stand.
that some of you here today that thinks that the only reason she went to that church is because she was old and she was broke down. But see, the Bible doesn't say she was old. All the Bible says is she's at least 18. Because for 18 years she's carried this issue. She could be a 19-year-old. And see, some of you have, have had problems and issues that have lasted longer than 18 years. It's up to you. It's up to you whether you're going to take the opportunity to give them to Jesus or you're going to still try to carry them and handle them yourself. I'm a living testimony. It don't work. How, how many times I've tried to take stuff out of my life only to watch it come back? Now, how many times I've tried to stop doing some stuff only to find myself doing it? How many times have I tried to turn my own life around only to find myself not doing a 180 and walking away but doing a 360 and finding myself right back in the same spot? Somebody in here today needs to stop the vicious cycle. We need to give it to Jesus. Because he is able. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly of all that even you can do. But there might be somebody in here today that doesn't know him. Not as Lord, but as Savior. See, unless you've been born again, all of this won't make no sense to you. But because the God that I serve is graceful, is gracious. He has made a way that all might be saved. Well, I know some church folk get messed up with that, but, but I'm telling you right now what I know. Not what I feel, not what I think, but what the Bible says. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him, he didn't say so that the church folk would believe in him. He said that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but that they would have everlasting life. And if you're here today and you don't know him as Savior, it's a good day to get on board. Yes, sir. With all heads bowed and all hearts praying, is the one today that needs to be saved. You're not saved, you're, you're not sure of your salvation. You're not even sure where you would go if you were to die today. If you can't answer that question with the affirmative, you can't say yes, then I offer you his plan. You see, his plan is simple. It's so simple that even a child can understand. You see, A, we need to admit and acknowledge that we're sinners because the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. And so we need to believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ was enough. We have to believe in our hearts that if we were the only sinner in the world, he would have gone to Calvary. And that's just what it is. It's a belief. I didn't say tarry on the morning bench. I didn't say run around the block. I didn't say speak in unknown tongue. I didn't say chant at the moon. I said you need to believe. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Calvary. Put your faith in that his blood was enough. And there was a drop of blood with your name on it. Except the drop that had your name and keep it moving. Keep it real. Because C means to confess or claim Jesus to be your Savior. And that's easy too. Because when I think of the goodness of him, and all that he's done for me, even when I was not walking with him, my soul cries, hallelujah. And I thank God for saving me. Yes. And if you claim that as your Savior, guess what? In the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, somewhere around the 13th verse, it tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. If you need salvation, make everything all right. Yes. Yes. What was bound and broken, bent and void,
Jesus knows my issue. And when he touches me, he may not go away. And even though my issue might have went away, I, give, I still got some collateral damage. I don't, I don't run up so fast no more, brother. Because my issue can mark my walk. I, I, I don't jump so high because my issue has marked my walk. I don't sing real good. Why? Because my issue has marked my walk. But I tell you what, I gave it to him. I don't continue to carry it. And even though it goes from my